All right, so the Acolyte is over and we need to talk about this series as a whole. Now, this is something I have done in the past and plan on continuing to do after every new Disney Plus Star Wars show that has dropped. I did it for Ahsoka, and now we are here at the end of The Acolyte. I've done my Episode 8 review, and now I kind of just want to get everything off my chest about the series and season as a whole. So, the season started with, you know, the premiere of the first two episodes on the same day. I was really looking forward to The Acolyte ever since they released it and still was even though I had some lowered expectations after several comments made by the creators, actors, etc. But still had high hopes and decided to stay positive even after all of the negativity surrounding it before it even came out and premiered. Now, the first two episodes I really enjoyed, although they weren't perfect, I thought they set up what was to come perfectly. I made a video covering my review of the first two episodes and got absolutely slammed on in the comments, but that did not stop my enjoyment. I really liked the first two episodes and thought it set up the story really well. And again, I don't think it was perfect. There were some small gripes I had with it, some cringeworthy moments that kind of took me out of it, but it still had me looking forward to what was to come. Then the following week, we had, you know, reports and rumors of episode three that it was going to completely destroy Star Wars, tear the fandom apart, and destroy everything that came before it. Now, while it partially did this in kind of turning half of the fan base away, even probably more than half of the fan base away, it didn't do the damage that it was predicted to do. Obviously, Star Wars is in a very shattered state after the entirety of the Acolyte, but episode three definitely lent a hand in that. And I myself didn't like the episode either. I thought it was like all right, you know, kind of showcasing the witches and how Osha and May came to be. I didn't really have a problem with them making them out of the force. It's totally normal that it could happen before Anakin. And I didn't think it diminished his storyline, but obviously others did. The problem I had with the episode is that it was just slow, kind of boring, predictable, and the witches were extremely cringeworthy. Every time I reference them now, I call them the cringe witches. I don't know, like, whose idea it was to have them do that little chant. I mean, cool, let them have a chant, but did nobody in the writer's room or nobody on set say, uh... Guys, I think we should change this because it's just lame. Like, that's the only way I can describe it, is it was just lame. And again, the episode overall just really didn't do it for me, regardless of the controversy around it. Now I'm going to kind of lump episodes 4, 5, 6, and 7 into 1. Because even as rough as I thought episode 3 was, I just was able to brush it off and say, you know what, they got a lot more episodes left, they can kind of turn this little hiccup around. And... They didn't. Uh, episodes 4, 5, 6, 7, as I mentioned, as a whole, were just really, really disappointing to me after coming off a strong episode 1 and 2 premiere, a kind of rough third episode. I was still in high hopes, but after each episode passed, I got a little less interested and cared a little less after each episode. Episode 4, okay, 5, okay, 6, okay, 7, okay. They were all just mediocre episodes with one of them episode seven just being a different pov of episode three which is arguably one of the worst episodes of the batch now i understand what they were going for looking back at it as an entirety it's a from a certain point of view kind of play on things but it was done in a way that really made me think they really could have put this as a b plot or different point of view to episode three. Episodes three and seven could have been one episode, and having another flashback as the penultimate with, you know, the quote-unquote reveal of Soul killing the mother, which has so many questions in itself, was just a huge letdown, because four, five, and six were just eh, filler, like, middle-of-the-season episodes for me, I really went into seven thinking, you know what, this is the episode before the finale, they really need to wrap stuff up, and they can do it in two episodes if done right, let's let's have some faith here, and lo and behold, it was a flashback episode that honestly 
didn't do much to push the finale. Yes, it made Osha unhappy that Sol killed her mother, which inevitably shifted her turn to the dark side, but it, something just didn't feel right. And then moving to episode 8, if you want to check out my full review on it, it is the last video on the channel. I will also put it in the description. Episode 8 kind of reeled me back in. It was a good close to the first season. It resolved the whole Osha, May, Chimer, Soul interaction, weird back and forth thing that we've been seeing the whole season. In no way did it do it flawlessly, but it still resolved it, which is what I wanted. And they kind of defied my very low, have you, expectations, which I guess was nice. But yeah, episode 8 was one of my more favorite episodes just due to you know, the lightsaber choreography, some cool things here and there, but also just had a lot of glaring issues. And again, as Ahsoka did, way too many open-ended questions that we don't even know if we're going to get an answer to. Now, it seems a little more likely than not that we are going to get a season two of this show. So hopefully they follow up on a lot of that. But for now, it was just meh overall. A huge issue I had with this show in this season is a issue I have with a lot of the Disney Plus shows, whether it be Star Wars, Marvel, whatever. And I say this in almost every review, they don't understand the formula of making limited series or shortened seasons. I don't care if you're going to have a season two, three, four, five, six, ten plus. You don't get to make seasons, eight episodes, they only have 30 minute runtime episodes. Not only is it not feeding the fans when there's stuff out there like Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, Stranger Things, making feature length movie long episodes. And Disney, one of the largest, if not the largest entertainment IP on the planet, spends $180 million. I'm gonna say that number one more time. $180 million on eight half an hour long episodes that go relatively close to nowhere. And this was my issue with the Ahsoka series. As much as I really liked the Ahsoka series, seeing all these characters in live action, it still had that feeling of an empty plot. Each episode you were wondering, okay, where is this going? Oh, I see where they're going, but uh, uh are they going to get there? Oh, they're they're not getting there. Well, oh, by the end of the series, uh, they're they're kind of there, but uh, we gotta wait till season two if that even happens. And when it does, it will more than likely not be two to three years in the future. And at that point, I mean, I've forgotten about the Ahsoka show. I already have forgotten about the Ahsoka show, and I have already forgotten about the Acolyte. I don't understand how they keep getting away with this and keep getting the green light to create these eight episode projects. I'm not even talking about Star Wars at this point, just Marvel and Disney Plus in general. These eight episode projects with such lackluster episodes, it feels like as soon as you hit play, it's over. And by the end of the season, you're left wondering and having more questions than you had before you even watched the show, which is just sad and annoying and repetitive. And I don't know if they're ever going to fix this issue. I don't know if they hear the fans or listen to the fans, but this trend just needs to stop. Look at Andor. Andor had 12 episodes, I believe, and each episode was at least 35 to 40 minutes, and it felt like a TV show. They got from point A to point B by the end of the season, and it was great. You had time to build up characters, to have meaningful dialogue, and this show really didn't have any of that outside of maybe a minute or two that they just decided to dedicate to Soul, who had some good dialogue here and there. Everybody else... I could care less about. I thought Sol was cool, not only just because he looked like a cool Jedi and kind of had Qui-Gon and Mace Windu-isms about him, but because he actually talked and told his story. Yet, it was a little bit, and we did not learn much about him, but none of these characters talked enough for us to care about. In dialogue, whether you agree with it or not, is a huge central point of any narrative. You need these characters to talk. You need to tell the audience why we should care about them. And these shows don't give enough time to do that. So we're just following these characters 
wondering basically what does this do for the overall story of Star Wars or the overall story of Marvel? Like, oh, is uh this character gonna end up in the Avengers? Hmm. You don't care about what's happening in the series because you know what it leads to. And it's the same case with Star Wars. I could care less about Osher and May. I want to know what their sacrifice means to the overall story. Now, I want to care about Osha and May, but there are no character beats that make me do that. And you're not going to get that unless you follow the blueprint of Andor, of Stranger Things, of Game of Thrones. Put that budget to use. And speaking of putting to use, put that money to use. $180 million is an absurd amount of money. That's why I doubled down on saying it earlier. $180 million is a crazy number to think about, even in terms of huge blockbuster movies. Now, I know I keep saying it and keep bringing it up, but look at Stranger Things. By the way, I'm going to selfishly plug here. I have a Stranger Things channel called The Upside Down Shack. The link is below. Please check it out. It's a much more positive community. And if you love Stranger Things, I cover literally everything from set photos to rumors to speculation, everything. It's going crazy over there. So if you enjoy Stranger Things, go check that out. But along the lines of Stranger Things, man, the last season, season four, every episode was over an hour long. If it wasn't, it was near. That budget for the fourth season was around $20 million an episode. There were nine episodes in the season. Eight times nine is, believe it or not, one. million. $180 million. See a similarity here, but also at the same time, do you see a huge glaring difference here? $180 million in Star Wars terms gets you eight 30 minute, horribly done episodes with horrible CGI and no dialogue. $180 million for the Duffer Brothers and Stranger Things gets you feature length movie episodes with amazing visuals makes you care about the characters makes you cry makes you laugh brings you every emotion under the sun for the same price as the acolyte and that is all i will say i don't understand where this money went and that is another thing overall that just baffles me about this show and that is all for this video really i mean overall was the acolyte bad was it horrible no but was it good no i give it a maybe 5.5 to 6 out of 10 while being extremely generous because it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen but giving the circumstances that this show had and all the resources and money they had I don't understand why we got what we got and it's just unfortunate and that is my overall thoughts on the acolyte I'm going to be doing skeleton crew reviews when that show comes out around Christmas time, we're starting to get some teasers about it currently. I mean, that show is unfortunately set up for failure as it is preceding the Acolyte. But I'm going to, again, as I always do, stay positive about it and go into it with an open mind. And I will also be doing episodic reviews for that show and a video similar to this concluding the show. So be on the lookout for that. Again, though, that is all I have to say. The Acolyte is over. I want to know what you guys have to say. What are your overall thoughts on The Acolyte? Did you like it? Why or why not? And tell me if you want to see a season two and where you think the future of Star Wars is headed after this catastrophe. Now, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to also leave a like on the video. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new and want to see more of my content. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.